as well proceed if everyone's okay to continue. Yeah, I want to do so well to open mic. Um, feel free to read. And I was going to ask our features, you're welcome to come up and read another poem. It's part of the open mic if you'd like at the end. I mean, I, I, I don't know what you're doing time wise, but you're welcome to do that. I'll take a spike. Okay. But uh, when do you have to leave, Andrew? Do you have to go quite soon? Okay, there should be time then, hopefully. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off with one of mine, then... I want to do it until Andrew can hear it. Oh yeah, and then we have Candice, and then Andrew, and then if that's okay. Great. So I want to read this one partly because uh, it's a new one, and I wanted to practice this. Uh, I've been over in the UK, this is my dad, who has Alzheimer's. But he has so many memories of being a boy in London in World War II, actually. So I wanted to read, you know, some imagery around that. They're always pumping through stories, you know. I've got so many of them, really, about his... Our mum's experiences as teens, children, really, in that, in that period of history and what they saw and experienced. Uh, but this one's from my dad, who has uh, Alzheimer's. It's called Father. By the time you read this, which you will not, the last stanza will already be dark. You would be a boy once more in a nighttime of war, in a scramble over broken brick, inhalation of a dust of years and remnants of your name. Where you would be held again in a hormonal rush of flame, adolescent and tense, in the kicking out of windows of the redstone terraces of an invisible city. By the time you read this, which you will not, what you are, were, will be worn as badge, notation, blood will be burnt. The telephone, you no longer answer, will not be ringing. A signpost with your name on it will not be read. You will be faceless. By the time you read this, which you will not, you will already be here.